Eight. I need more coffee. I drink all my coffee. We're live, and I drank all my coffee. It's my dad, another dad cup, right? For my kids. Say hey. Good morning. It's five a.m. Master Scrum. Hope, and it's Thursday. Two to, and two more days to our uh, Labor Day holiday. So I hope everybody's doing good. Good morning. I don't know about you all. But it's been an interesting night in the middle of the night. So apparently my Windows is updating and it updates it back. But anyway, I got to talk about a couple of things. So this is, we talk about Agile and being Agile and Scrum and different things. So this process, very basic stuff, very tactical in how we do things. And uh, a couple of things happened. Well, yesterday was a really good day. It was going swimmingly too well. But then I fell asleep, blah, blah, got home, and I woke up, I don't know, 3 o'clock in the morning for some reason, probably because I actually fell asleep early. And uh, I turn on my phone, and I get this email from PMI telling me my PMI ACP uh, certification has been, uh, what was the quote word? I love it. I think it said terminated. But it was because the renewal process is so messed up. Oh, wrong one. I want to get the right words. Oh, all my emails on PMI, right? I get a million emails, right? And so apparently suspension notice. There you go. Suspension notice. Da, 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 da. And I wrote a big, big email on it. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Oh, there you go. I woke up. Yes, your suspension is real, but we, you could change that. So I've been a member of PMI for over 10 years. I think it's 2008. They've been around for 50. So I've been around a member of PMI for 20% of their lifetime, right? And you should get emails all the time about expiration. So I just want to talk about certifications a little bit and customer stuff. And I just think it's funny because I always, I always talk about this to everybody and how to be. A lot of these systems, I'm going to go all over the place. I apologize right now. And I hope you're liking and subscribing because I'm just going to go on a rant. It's bad. So I'm a member, and if you look at my, my thing on uh, LinkedIn, my resume, whatever, I have certifications all over the place, right? I'm one of those people. I just, I don't know if I just collect them or what, but I take classes all the time. And now I'm going to teach classes because I want to be sharp, and I want to bring that information back to my teams and just constantly stay on top of what's going on. But I'm a very basic guy on what you do, you do the basics right, why I'm doing this tactical thing and just providing the information out. You do the basics right, everything else is easy, okay? It just added on, just makes everything better. So, I had did all my PDUs, everybody SEs, PDUs, renewables, earnings, whatever. I usually get them done, like, I usually have a backlog and in fact it's so backlogged up that I usually don't have to take any for years. Um, but I had finished it halfway through my three-year membership at PMI for the ACP, and I have my PMI, um, PMP cert, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I reached it last Jan January 2018. This is now going to be almost September 2019. So that's over more than a year and a half ago. So I got this thing about renewing, but why would I renew my membership? <laughs> Only been a year when I last renewed it, and I got another year and a half because it'll just screw up their whole system. Just know it will. I've been doing this too long. I've been doing this for 30 years. And uh, so I get zero notification letters about my renewal at all since when I finished my 30 years, my 30 PDUs. So tonight, at 1.40 in the morning, an hour and a half after apparently my expiration for my PMISP, I get an email telling me my 
my PMI ACP is suspended, right? I'm just like, what the heck, right? No notification whatsoever, nothing. They send an email after the fact and no warnings, no nothing. And it's like, really? So I've had my ACP for six years, never had a problem. I guess it renews every three years, but I know they changed the dashboards and the, and the, and the layout of their system. And I'll be honest with you, every time some system changes your dashboard layouts, some basic functionality just disappears. They work so hard on making it look pretty you know, do some things. And the basic fundamentals of that organization drop off the planet. And I've seen it so many times and I'm not just picking them on PMI. I've seen it with, uh, Scrum Alliance. I've seen it with my own little software company that I use. I can name them all. Every time the basic stuff just disappears. And when they write requirements, they forget about the basics. So when I first started that PMI, when I first became an engineer some 30 years ago, I only made $26,000 a year compared to what people. So my, my income was like a, a little bit less than $26,000 my first year of being out of college, right? 30 years ago, a long time ago. Um, so back then I didn't have a lot of money, but when I did have make enough and I could join PMI and pay for the renewal and take the test and all that stuff. But I find it amazing. The amount of stress I see in the world of certifications about getting certs, having them, people celebrate, I got my cert. You know, it was great. It's awesome, which I think is wonderful for those people. And it shows they worked hard to get it. But then the system that runs the certification, and it happens all of them, and it ain't just one. It's all of them. They lose the sight of what their customer base is and where it, where it blossoms from that is that they don't help people maintain their certification. They want the renewal, but they don't look at the certification. They want you to renew every year for your membership. But then they don't pay attention to the key thing about the whole membership is a certification. Anyway, maybe that's a product owner or business thing. Um, what I find, and this is, I'm going to go to the second one. Um, business has to make sure, and when we do Agile or do PMP or, or Waterfall, now YouTube's having glitches. That was pretty cool. Um, you have to maintain that business ownership, what the core of your business is. So we can do all these user stories, planning, whatever, but you have to understand, you have to remember what the core basics of the business, like you can write all the software, but if someone can't buy it and pay for it, it doesn't have any value, right? You can't keep your company. And I do this stuff for free just because I want to share it and, and hopefully help everybody. I actually sent an email to PMI customer service to volunteer to help look at all the requirements in their software just for free. Cause I'm a member and I love it. I, I really want to make, I want them to look good. I don't want other members of the organization to go through what I just did. I want to go check it all out and I'll do it for free. I swear I will. And just kind of revamp the requirement. They're probably like, what? We'll do it but I'll do it for free because I'm a member, but I want to keep this short because I see glitches going all over the place, whether it's windows, the internet, something, I'm going to do this short. But one of the things I want to stress to everybody, everybody talks about Spotify, all this capability, you know, customers, business writing requirements. The one important thing is if you are writing stuff or doing, you should be a customer of your own business. I've been a customer of IBX, I've been a customer for what I do now, bank, you know, all the places I've worked at, I've been their customer. When I am a scrum master, agile coach, member, whatever, I tell my team when I go look at the software, I just wanna have basic customer um, permissions, really basic. I don't want, I know when you all are software programmers and developers, you get admin rights. You have all these extra permissions. Problem is all those extra permissions mask little things that don't work for your customer base. 
one company I work for, we used to do a video. One of the other um, agile coaches would show a picture of this car with a, a big external air conditioning unit in the window and giant antennas and just a conglomerate mess of stuff that was just clopped on to a requirement. So you had the capability and nothing looked uniform. I was a customer on the other side and I wonder sometimes if they were, and I would tell the guy, the director, I would say, Hey, I'm seeing this. Like when I pay the bill, it goes to a whole nother software that doesn't look anything like the main product for all I know I got hacked I don't know but you have to be a customer of your product right people talk about how Spotify works those people are customers for their product they know how it works so when they change something they get impacted on the other side and I will say there's another company I work for I'm not gonna name names they had a process where when they would roll out new techniques, they would have their, their people in the organization who were also customers. They gave them a real discount, like free almost to use the product to go home and check it on, on their system so they can be a customer so they can do instant customer focus groups because they were the customer and let the software developers know how it was going. You really need to do that. When I'm this PMI and I watch, I wonder sometimes how many of these people who are in PMI writing the code are PMI members to the membership or any one of the ones I do. I really think give it to them free. It's okay. So I think it's important when we do this agile stuff that we should be customers of our own product. And if you are not a customer of your own product, you got to ask yourself, what are we doing here? Right? Maybe, maybe it's an age, maybe if you're 20 and you're selling to senior citizens, maybe you should hire some senior citizens and put them on your team to help you code so those senior citizens can help you understand how your product's going to the senior citizen. I know I'm going on a rant and I could probably talk about this forever, but it makes sense, right? Hire some people that actually use your product to be on your teams to give you feedback on what you do. Instant feedback, right? So I don't remember it. And then the PMI thing set me off and Microsoft and all that. Because I remember there was a video also where Microsoft would sell their VSTS or their Azure or whatever it was. And the people at VSTS weren't using their own product. And then they realized they should be using their own product. So when they make the software codes for the new product, they, they know what's going on. It makes sense, right? So if you are in this business, you need to question yourselves. Am I a customer of this business? Am I seeing on the other side what it is? It doesn't cost a lot of money. And in fact, every business should tell, not order them. Like you could only use us as a customer. In fact, I would encourage them not only to be the customer of your business, I would encourage them to be customers of other businesses in your competition. Why? Because then you know what they are doing and they should regularly go in there so you can make your software better. That is agile. All this stuff we talk about, you got to understand your product line to be really, truly agile. And I'm sorry if I'm going on a rant, but it's just like, it's basic stuff, man. You know, if you're in a corner store, and you sell hoagies in Philadelphia, right? You should buy your hoagies, but also every once in a while go to another store and find out how they make their hoagies. Are they better there? Do they do something different? What's the environment? Don't think you have all the answers. I guess I'm not on a rant. I'm sorry. It's just, I've been up since three o'clock in the morning watching my windows update kick in and all this, and this is live, right? Oh boy, it's Thursday. The holiday's coming. I got three days, so I'm gonna build lots of content. Lots of stuff's gonna roll out on the other side. And I and I watch my videos. I hear Gary V says he doesn't watch his videos. I watch my videos because I want to know what the product is on the other side. Is it good? I don't know. It's working. It's going somewhere. Anyway, 
This is 5 a.m. Mr. Scrum. Have a wonderful day. It's early. Enjoy your day. The holiday's coming up. Love you all. And please like and subscribe and share. And we're going to do stuff. Maybe we'll bump it up a notch. What was that? Bam. We're going to go up a notch. Um, but have fun, man. This is great stuff. Cause you can't, you can't write this stuff down. It's just real life, right? Oh my God. Anyway, have a great day and happy scrumming and enjoy. Bye.